Hi everybody, Marcy Ann here with Spinnaker, and today we are visiting beautiful Savannah. Right behind me is the man himself who originally founded Savannah, General Oglethorpe, back in 1733. Now there's a lot to be said throughout the day about General Oglethorpe going through how he platted out this area of Savannah and how Savannah became this gorgeous, gracious city that we see today. So we've got a lot to see. We're gonna be seeing the cathedral. We're gonna be visiting the Juliet Lowe House. We're going to be going to the Mercer House. We're gonna to go to Forsyth Park. So sit back, let's get ready to start our journey. And right now we're to learn a little bit about General Oglethorpe. General Oglethorpe came here in 1733, and he was with 120 um, different settlers that came aboard the ship called the Ant. Now, their goal was to set up a kind of a buffer between South Carolina and Florida. Um, Charleston was already founded, and so King George II wanted to make sure that Charleston stayed safe, so they started this colony, Georgia, named after George II. Now, when they arrived here, it, this area was was already occupied, of course, with the Yamacra um, Native Americans that were already here, and they had a very friendly relationship. Now, Oglethorpe really planned out. He's a planner, he's like me. And so when he came here, this area was originally written out to have 24 squares. In the end, today, you can still visit 22 of those squares, and that is how this land plat was laid out. Now, Savannah, of course, was the first city in Georgia. And when they set up this area, there were three things that I found that were kind of interesting that were the law of the land. You could worship any way you wanted to, but you could not drink rum, you could not own slaves, and you could not be a lawyer. So that's kind of an interesting thing that they had laws against lawyers um, in this area. So, but that just adds to the little bit of quirkiness that has stayed in Savannah to this day. We have a lot to cover. History here starts with the Yamacraws, it goes all the way into the Civil War. Let's get started. Right now we are at the Juliet Gordon Lowe home. Now Juliet Gordon Lowe, for those of you that have been former brownies or Girl Scouts or you're just kind of a fan of cookies, this is a very important lady and she's a very important lady to the city of Savannah. She was born here. Actually, she was born in the house that we're going to be going inside in just a little bit for a beautiful home tour. This home was built by her grandparents and Juliet was born here in 1860. She was here until 1864 when a gentleman named Sherman, who we're going to talk more about, um, came and made a stop in the Savannah area. And then she married in the 1880s to a gentleman that was named um, William Lowe, which had the nickname Below. So her and Below, actually, he was a British gentleman and they went overseas and she lived primarily in England and Scotland. Unfortunately, he passed away about 20 years later. And so Juliet became acquainted with the founder of the Boy Scouts while she was over there in England and Scotland. And he got her in touch with his sister who started the Girls' Guides over in England. And Girls' Guides were the precursor of the American version of the Girl Scouts. Juliet then came back to America, came back to her hometown of Savannah, and she and her sister set up in 1912 the American version of the Girl Scouts. Now in 1953, the Girl Scouts organization did purchase this home um, in honor of their founder, and that's what we're gonna visit today. Here we are at the beautiful John the Baptist Cathedral here in Savannah. Now this is a, a location that actually, if you're taking the trolley tour, it'll drop you right out front. And it's a place you wanna make sure that you hit. The Catholic faith was brought into Savannah primarily with the immigration of the French that came here from Haiti. They were escaping Haiti. And a lot of those original people in the 1700s actually had just fled from France from the revolution there. So they were looking for a calm, safe, place that they could settle down. Now, after the Civil War in the 1890s, the Catholic faith had decided to establish a cathedral here in Savannah because their congregation had grown so exponentially over those years, over that hundred years. So they built this beautiful John the Baptist Cathedral. Now the cathedral, it was begun in 1876. It was finished in 1896. We had a lot of Irish immigrants that helped to build this cathedral. It unfortunately then burned just two years after it had opened. So then it had to be rebuilt. Now after that great fire, the only thing that was left was some exterior walls and two spires. So it reopened again in 1912. And now if you can come in and you can see how it looked from 1912 on. So come on, let's go inside and let's take a look. 
Something to notice when you're in here is the coloration of the paintings, um, very French influence, you can tell. And when you look at these marble columns, take a good close look at them, and you'll see that they have actually, these are not marble, these are, it's an effect, um, a beautiful painting effect that's just incredible throughout this area. But if you look closely, you can, you can see that this isn't truly marble, it's all painted on. So this is just a huge canvas of incredible artwork and well worth visiting. If you have to think back that none of the rest of this stuff was here. You can see the gardens behind me. This is the trustee gardens. There were 10 acres here. You have to realize when General, General Oglethorpe, I'm still going to get that word right, when they came in here, they weren't sure which crops would really grow in this climate. So this 10 acres was kind of their experimental crop growing area to see what would really take. So this was kind of the first community garden. And then right attached to this is where we're going to go have lunch. So come with me. We're going to head down this way. We just got done with a wonderful meal in the pirate's house and we walk out and who do we find? Smiling Toby. Hello, Smiling Toby. How are you today? I'm all right, my dear. How are you doing this fine day? Can't complain in this weather. Oh, absolutely not. It's beautiful outside today. Can, what can you tell us a little about, about the pirating history in Savannah? Well, oh, pirating history in Savannah? Oh, my goodness. Well, the unknown fact is Savannah, Georgia had more pirates than the Caribbean did back in its day. Really? This is why we originally have the pirates house. Was this place originally was filled with pirates to a point that this building was called the pirates house tavern and inn. Because that's where the seafarers like to venture. They showed up and they were there because that particular bay out there, still to this day, is the second largest port in the United States. Mm -hmm. so we had a lot of incomings, outcomings. Most of it legal. Pakistan. That's also why where you're standing, there's tunnels underneath this here city. Because back in the day during the Prohibition era, we liked the liquor and we liked it a lot. So we would we we would get ships to come up and then import certain illegal goods, <coughs> hard liquor, yeah, things right. like that in and shell it. And that little tunnel also helped with our little um, employment issue as well, but that's a particular story for us. That helps store. a lot with worker shortages, I imagine. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Give them a little bit too much to drink. Tell them, uh, you know, get, find you a lad that's a little upset about, you know, maybe losing his lady. You know, he's got some bad luck going on. Give him a little bit of the tales of the seven seas and all that business. And all the whilst he's drinking himself, he's having him a nice time, and then he passes out on the table. So we pick him up. And he's going to wake up later, eventually. Eventually. And by that time, he's going to be, you know, all the way to China, the Caribbean, you know, Asia. He don't know. He's going to wake up, see the sails of the sea. It's also where the old saying goes, when you're three sheets to the wind. Three sheets to the wind meant when you woke up after being shanghai on the ship. What are you going to see when you first wake up? You're going to see the sails. Okay. okay. And then you're going to hear your three sheets to the wind, mate. Welcome to the crew. <laughs> so really, you were like the first travel agents. Yeah. Yeah, that's very nice. So if you would like to join the crew, make sure you make it here to the pirate, ho pirate house. We take good care of you, mates. Come on in. And say hello to Smile and Toby. Here we are in Forsyth Park the symbol of Savannah that you will see on every brochure that represents this city. Now, this was originally a 30-acre park that was founded in 1851. Now, the fountain that you see behind me was put in in 1858. And contrary to what some people think, um, this has got a pretty cool story. This came in the 1858 version of Amazon, which happened to be the Sears catalog. So I'm just kind of curious how many boxes this thing came in in order to be delivered here to Savannah in 1858. Now there's a long history in Savannah with the immigration of the Irish and so this in the St. Patrick's Day they will make this fountain green in honor of St. Patrick's Day along with this huge celebration actually the second largest St. Patrick's celebration in the United States occurs here in Savannah so if you're looking for green beer and a place to get your Irish on this is the place for you. 
Here we are in the Colonial Cemetery. Now, what's the difference between a cemetery and a graveyard? I'm glad you asked. A cemetery is not attached to a church or any religious structure. So this is more of a municipal um, burial ground that anyone could come in and be buried in. This was founded in 1750. So we have some pretty old burials that are in here. Actually, in here you have over 9,000 souls that have been buried in this area. One of them is Gwyneth Button, who was one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. He got on the wrong end of a duel um, with Lachlan McIntosh, and so he is buried in here, unfortunately. So another story about this area is that when our friend Sherman came down here into Savannah and with all of his friends, his friends needed a place to stay. So you have all of our Union soldiers that had a huge encampment in this area. It was a very cold winter that year. They were here in December. They really didn't have a whole lot going on. So what do young men do when they're trying to stay warm? They're opening up graves. They're throwing the bodies out and going into the vaults to stay warm. They are causing all kinds of malicious destruction. If you look closely, you'll see that a lot of these markers have had names scratched out or different dates put in to kind of mess with things in here. Not a good way to make friends and influence people, those Union soldiers, while they were here. But if you get the opportunity, please make sure you get a chance to come in here and walk around and you can read some of these epitaphs. You learn a lot of history in this area, reading about these people's lives and getting a feel for these families. You'll see that the families kind of are in these main plot areas. One dark story of Savannah's history is that there were several yellow fever outbreaks that occurred in the city. Um, one of the biggest ones was in the 1820s. And so it is told that here in the Colonial Park and the Colonial Burial Grounds that there is a mass grave of seven, 700 citizens who were put into this mass grave due to the yellow fever out outbreak of 1820. So make sure that you put this one on your must-see list. Here we are in front of the Mercer Williams house. Now this house has a lot of stories to it. Some of you may be familiar with one of them and we will get to that important one in a moment. But first let's look at the history of this house. This house is glorious. The architecture in here is just amazing. We just did a tour in here. We, unfortunately we couldn't take pictures or video for you. So just take it from me. And especially if you love artwork, if you love antiques, and if you love color, it's a wonderful stopover. It's a quick tour and it's definitely worth it. But as far as this house being built in 1860 is when they began it. And if you kind of know your history, you know that that's probably not the most opportune time to begin a house construction in the South. And exactly what you would think was, would happen, happened. It was originally supposed to be built by General Mercer, who was great grandfather to Johnny Mercer, a son of Savannah. You may recognize the name Johnny Mercer. Um, he owned Capitol Records. He wrote, um, oh gosh, Hooray for Hollywood, Moon River. But Johnny Mercer never lived in this house, nor did his grandfather, because when the Civil War broke out, of course, Grandpa went off to war, and this house had all of the wonderful materials to build this wonderful edifice behind me. But unfortunately, General Sherman and his guys came on in, and across the street, as you would guess, there is a square. And there was an encampment over there, and what better way to gussy up your encampment than to steal all of the um, all of the lumber and the bricks and things that are right here across the street to make these beautiful homes. So unfortunately this house was not completed until 1869 and that was completed by somebody else. Now years later it was purchased by a somebody you may have heard of, Jim Williams. Now Jim Williams was very well known and very active in the preservation of these local homes here in Savannah. A lot of homes wouldn't exist here without him. He was a gentleman that it was very much, he used to have a business downstairs that he would work on um, different antiques and re restorations. So he was very well known, very much a socialite in this area, was known for his renowned parties in this home as well. And unfortunately, there was an incident that occurred. There was a young man that was shot actually in the windows right behind me um, in that room. And it brought Jim Williams up on charges and he had gone through four trials 
four trials over eight years. And in the end, he was acquitted of that murder. Unfortunately, he did pass away just six months after he was released after that. So it's kind of a tragic story. And if you're interested in learning more about that story, or if you that rings any bells for you, if you heard of the story Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, that is about Jim Williams, who used to live here in this house, and that's where that all occurred. If you get a chance and you're in Savannah, this is definitely worth going inside and taking a look at the Mercer Williams house. Here we are in River Street. Now, this is a place you don't want to miss, and it's going to be a little trek to get down here. So you can take that hop on, hop off shuttle. That will bring you down. That's a great way of going if you have any um, issues with walking at all, because you have really steep stairs or really treacherous um, cobblestone hills to walk down, to come down to this area. But it is definitely worth it. You want to come down here. This is where you have some wonderful restaurants. If you're into seafood, this is where you're going to find some wonderful places places to eat. You get to see the river um, front as well. You may want to join in and take part in one of the river cruise dinners that are down here as well. So wonderful boutique shops. You want to make sure that you hit the Savannah Kitchen. Um, if you like pralines, you've got to go there. They give you little free samples. So if you're really lucky, they're warm when you get to try them out. If you're going to be coming down here on River Street, make sure you check out the restaurants, all of these wonderful boutique shops. Make sure you go all the way to the end. There's like a straw market at the very end where you will see um, that there's some local artisans and a little bit one of a kind souvenirs that you can find down at the far end of Riverwalk. As you can see, the sun is setting behind me. We've had a full day here in Savannah. So I hope that all of these little tips and tidbits are something that are useful to you. We could be here for days to give you more and more information on more places to visit. So we will definitely be coming back um, and doing another series for you. This is kind of like, if you haven't been here before, this, these are the main things you wanna hit. We're gonna do a encore performance in the future, giving you those hidden places, places you may not see or hear about, something that locals would kind of suggest to you to see. So that will be coming in the future. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask us. You can always ask us in the comments and we'll get back to you on that. We're gonna finish up our night. We're gonna have a bite to eat and then we're gonna be going out on a ghost tour. So a great way to end your evenings here in Savannah, learning about the spooks and the specters that walk amongst us out in those squares. So I look forward to that as well. The clock is chiming, it's time to go. Thank you everyone, stay safe and we'll see you soon.